Okay, at this time, I think we are ready to hear the report for, uh, of the Mission Central. So I call the chair, uh, the executive director, Reverend Ba uh, Fisher, to the podium for the report. Some hurricane victims in New Jersey also have a little more to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. Thanks to Mid-Staters who took part in our Operation Sandy Relief campaign, we asked and you answered all month. You donated brand new coats, blankets, diapers, toys, and so much more. Now your generosity is really making a difference. James Crummel has more from Atlantic City. Volunteers at Mission Central in Mechanicsburg are dealing with precious cargo items you donated to help victims of Hurricane Sandy. You gave so much, it was too much for this 53-foot tractor trailer, another truck had to be brought in. Now, after days of giving, it was finally time to take these donations to the people who need them. So here we are now at Venice Park United Methodist Church in Atlantic City. We're here, and now all we're doing is waiting for that truck. After seeing the giant tractor trailer make its way down the tiny street, people here were overjoyed and a bit overwhelmed. <coughs> Unlike Mission Central, there are no forklifts here. Everything has to go by hand. And then you start with the first room and just order the, okay. the second room and we'll stuff that. We can do a bucket for great because I don't think most yeah. of these are very heavy. Okay. Of having people running into each other. After a quick prayer. But as we carry each box, Lord, let us know that this is going to help someone in need who right now has nothing. Amen, let's get started. The volunteers begin the long process of unloading the truck. Oh my God, oh, what a blessing. It, that is truly a blessing to see the people open their hearts to give so much to the people down here. There are our neighbors, yeah, it's, it's heartwarming. That's, that's what our country is all about, right? Even strangers stop to lend a hand. In less than two hours, everything was off the truck and in the church, all 40,000 pounds. We can't thank you enough, and there are not enough words to explain or exclaim our joy and happiness for what you have done for us. Pastor Clifford Still says they'll probably get everything handed out by the end of the week. That's how great the need is. It um, is definitely uh, sad that it will be going that quick but it's also good that it's here to go. Elizabeth Austin lost nearly everything. She says the little things, like cleaning supplies, are a big help. It mean a lot. It saved me a lot of money, too. Money that I don't have. This is the only coat that she had left. As you see, it has no arms in it, and it's very thin. Carrie Duncan is here with his five-year-old daughter, Manasia. Most of her clothes were ruined when her bedroom flooded. Because of you, she now has a new warm coat. It take a lot of stress off me, you know, because I hate to see it go out like this in the morning. And now I'm happy, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm thankful for all the donations that's coming on all over the world. I'm, I'm so grateful, and it's been wonderful. People pulled together, and it's so wonderful how they pulled together when a disaster happened. You know, it's, it's just a blessing. Blessings is a word we heard a lot throughout this day. While watching Thank these you. people find reasons to smile, you may want to take time to count yours. We've just today been blessed from Harrisburg, from Mission Central. What do you say? Thank you. All of these items will continue to be given out to the people who need them, as well as these supplies. You also donated more than $30,000 in cash to help the victims of the storm. Now, we want to thank everyone who helped make Operation Sandy Relief possible, but most of all, we want to thank those of you who decided to give. In Atlantic City, New Jersey, James Crummel, ABC 27 News. It's because of our hub network that was our infrastructure that we could carry out Operation Sandy Relief. I hope we have some slides here. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was our infrastructure that we could carry out Sandy Relief. It continues to be a thriving part of Mission Central's work that gives this conference a presence throughout the Northeast, throughout our local area, through the nation, and through the world. It's our stepping stone for Mission Central to be able to connect nearly $10 million worth of materials that pass through our warehouse annually 
to transform the lives of over two million people. Can you picture two million people touched by Mission Central? Let me show you a picture of a nearby stadium. Anybody know where this is? It's Giant Stadium in Hershey. Seats 10,500 people. Nowhere near two million people, is it? What about this stadium? Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Seats 65,386 people. Nowhere near the capacity of two million. What about the stadium at Mecca? I mean, Penn State. <laughs> I'm sure you can rattle off the number, 107,282 people. Many of you have been to these stadiums and have thought, wow, what a lot of people. What about a recent presidential inauguration where it was said that one million people attended? We're still not to two million people. It's hard to picture two million people, yet through your support and the work of Mission Central, millions of lives are transformed annually. They're transformed by our work in disaster response, as you saw in the video clip, transformed as we connect all sorts of resources, like medical equipment that saves lives, like the famous MRI unit that we poured our prayers and our blessings over, offering prayers for the equipment and prayers to the ministers and to the doctors and the nurses and the patients of Honduras. And then we sent it on its journey to save lives. And finally, it arrived at Hospital Escuela in the capital city of Honduras, ready to heal thousands of lives. Millions of lives are transformed annually because of Giant Corporation, our largest corporate donor to Mission Central through a seasonal merchandise and some small grants. Millions of lives are transformed because of the State College District who raised over $18,000 to replace our second oldest operating forklift in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, <laughs> which we hope to have those new lifts in a few weeks. And also many others contributed and other churches and individuals and a grant from the Klein Foundation. And finally, millions of lives are transformed because of our volunteers. Thousands of volunteers, many of you gathered here today, have been to Mission Central to give of your time and service, your sweat and your tears. It's as if I have a staff of anywhere from 15 to 30 people every day because of the thousands of volunteers. Mission Central represents the Susquehanna Annual Conference to the world. We don't receive ministry shares. We don't receive one great hour of sharing funding. We don't receive government funding. We do receive your dedicated support as individuals, as churches, as United Methodist women, as United Methodist men, and on and on in Sunday school classes, and we are thankful for that support. But we've been doing some studying lately, and we discovered that there's 941 churches in this conference, but only about 27.7% support Mission Central. Many churches give large gifts, and some give small gifts, some give average gifts, but if we calculated out the average gift, it's $345 per church that supports us. If every church just gave us $650, we could meet our budget and do amazingly more vision of mission and ministry. You all should have received a book, a little clip that reminded you to buy a day if possible. The book is in the words that inspire dreams. Uh, if you got last year's book, Dare to Disciple, that's a good book too. But we also have copies of this available. Stop by our table. It's courtesy of Executive Books in uh, Mechanicsburg. Also with that was a little envelope, and I encourage you to use that envelope. Many of you stopped by our table and got this instrument. This with the envelope and maybe your checkbook or a credit card or some cash. You've got it made. Uh, you can drop that off at our table anytime. I'd like to now introduce uh, the president of our board, Marsha Fisher, who I've had the privilege to serve with for the last two and a half years. Uh, we hopefully keep each other on track. Marsha. 
Good afternoon, Central, yeah, I almost said Central Pennsylvania Conference. That dates me, doesn't it? Susquehanna Conference. It is a privilege and a blessing to share this Mission Central report with you here today. But first of all, it's also very important that we, as a body of the Susquehanna Conference, acknowledge and give thanks and praise to my board of directors who has stuck by uh, the commitment to work and do the best job that they possibly can with God's gifts for Mission Central. Please give them a round of applause. Over the last year, uh, I'm sure some of you are aware that the board of Mission Central, along with the executive director, has been focused on discerning God's vision for the second decade of Mission Central's ministry. We have worked with several experts in the field of strategic planning to assist and guide us in the area of business development, sustainable funding, and also public relations. It is now time for us to seek individuals with a wide sphere of influence in these areas, specifically those with uh, prior experience serving with nonprofits and with large corporate business. The early stories of Mission Central begin with supplying suitcases. Remember those God moments of the suitcases arriving at Mission Central and, and Harry wasn't sure how to tell the dear soul who was bringing them, we have enough. And one day he had himself committed to tell the gentleman when he brought the, the latest round of suitcases that in fact we didn't need any more. Well, God had other plans for those suitcases, and about that time, a mission group that was going to be traveling realized that if they had more suitcases, they could leave the suitcases behind with supplies in them. So when they came in, they asked how many suitcases, Harry said, how many suitcases do you need? And they said, and it turned out to be the same number of suitcases that were in the storage area. So it spoke to us that God is very much in charge of what resources we receive at Mission Central and that he had plans for those items long before the person showed up to receive them. Well, that was the beginning of Mission Central, and now, 11 years later, we tell God moments of 144 hospital beds arriving at Mission Central, hauled by Walmart in this particular case, uh, into Mission Central, and we found a resource for them. They were waiting with pods in the port in Norfolk uh, to take uh, supplies to a place in India and they were holding up the shipment because they needed beds. So those beds went in that direction. Rob has already mentioned that our MRI machine, thanks to our owner of a trucking company, provided the much needed transport to get the MRI through all the legalities of going down the East Coast through the states and following all the rules and regulations. And he took the MRI to the port in Tampa, Florida, where a Chiquita banana cargo vessel hauled it to Honduras. Mission Center was in a very exciting place to be because it makes us totally aware of God's influence in our life and in the mission work that we do. When we began in 2002, our initial focus were the UMCOR kits. Everybody's aware of that. Now today, our ecumenical mission partners have expanded to areas around the world that we could not have located on a map or a globe 10 years ago. National and local opportunities for mission have also greatly expanded. In 2011, when the Susquehanna Valley was flooded throughout our conference, Mission Central was there. 
In 2012, when Hurricane Sandy tore up the northeast seaboard again, Mission Central was there providing for those in need thanks to the dedication of our staff and hundreds of volunteers. Why am I telling you this right now? Well, first of all, we all know this to be true, that a healthy, vibrant church begins with a strong foundational, a foundation in mission. We invite you to use Mission Central as one of the tools to help your church live out Christ's commands, which is to be his hands and feet in mission, connecting God's resources with human need. This is who we are at Mission Central. Seize the opportunity to be alive in Christ together. Thank you. Thank you, Marsha. I also want to thank my staff. Uh, my executive assistant, Deb, is here. Uh, the rest of the staff is busy working, but uh, we couldn't do it without them as well, nor could I do my job. But a nondescript red brick warehouse located in Mechanicsburg at Five Pleasant View Drive, from a dream to a reality to transforming lives. Find us on the web at missioncentral.org, Facebook and Twitter. Stay informed about how we transform lives. Learn about what we do. And I invite you to join us on that journey alive in Christ because we truly are alive in Christ together at Mission Central. And here's my personal invitation to you. Please pay close attention to the screen. Thank you. I just would like to share with the body that uh, the first experience of Mission Central several years ago when I was uh, personally, uh, physically present there, uh, that really touched my heart very deeply and felt very proud that the United Methodist Church, Susquehanna Annual Conference, and the Connectional Church uh, as we are have this kind of witness you know, through God's people touching two million lives each year. It's just awesome. I just would like to ask you, uh, how many of you have been physically uh, visited Mission Central? Good, wonderful, thank you. I would like to invite any of you who haven't done that, please come and visit at the place and experience what God is doing in that awesome place. I invite your congregations, young people, people in the community and see what the United Methodist Church is doing in mission in the name of Jesus Christ. So thanks be to God for their ministry and witness among us.